Hi guys, this is Jason Zach from Nathaniel School of Music. In this lesson, we are going to learn quite a few things really in the field of piano playing. We are going to look at chord inversions and how you can primarily use them with secondary dominant chords or chords which are out of scale, which kind of lead into chords or diatonic chords which are within the scale. And once we get that framework or that theoretical foundation going in the lesson, we will then look at how you can voice the chords, how you're going to voice the chords smoothly. As you heard in the intro video, you are able to hear some kind of a melody, right? And I was highlighting it with my voice. So I'll show you how you can voice it, not just using inversions, but using the knowledge of the chords, knowledge of what they have in common and knowledge of what you want to bring out in your performance, right? And we'll also look at an arpeggio pattern as you heard to make it very flowing, very dynamic in nature as well. And um, last but not least, we'll tackle the melodic aspects of this exercise a little further in terms of using inversions to bring out the melody, using notes which uh, repeat to make it more melodic floating certain notes and of course just shaping the, mel the melody in our mind a topic which I call as melodic curves so the notes and staff notation for this exercise are found on our patreon page you could consider heading over there for a small amount of five dollars as a monthly subscription you can get all these handwritten notes staff notation midi and backing tracks for pretty much all the content and lessons which we do on YouTube let's get cracking so I'm going to start you off with the chord progression. The chord progression, I've chosen it on the key of C major. And the whole idea is each part of the chord progression. I'm going to divide the chord progression into four parts. Every part is going to sound from the tonic or the one chord or the root chord. So in the C major scale, the tonic is going to be C major. So you end up doing the first chunk of the chord progression, if you will, will be C major. C over E and then F major. So what's happening here is it's a normal C major and for the purpose of this exercise you can follow along. We are going to play C major in its second inversion in order to squeeze that E out, the melodic E. So this E would be sticking out. So that's your C major first chord and the second chord would be Again a C major in the right hand, but the way I'm doing it is I'm playing E in the bass. So it's serving as a C slash E chord, a slash chord basically. So, da, na. so it's making the tonic chord C major rather unstable if you think about it. You, you would always think, hey, in the key of C major, shouldn't C major be stable? Well, when you change the bass note, nothing sounds stable. The bass note is not the root of that particular chord, you know. So C major, C over E, and this is yearning to go to F major. It almost feels like F major is the new tonic, it, but, but it's not. It's the four chord. It's the subdominant, as we call it in classical theory. C, C over E, F, and what did I just sing? I sang the bass notes. C, E, C, E, F and what the melody in the right hand at the top note seems to be highlighting is that's E, G, E and how am I voicing this? I'm not doing I'm not doing chunks of chords rather I'm highlighting I'm, I'm ensuring that I use all the notes of the chord but Keeping it a bit open with my voicing. So the common notes between your second and third chord in this chord progression or there will be at least one common note because I've designed it to include secondary dominance. So secondary dominance will pull to the next uh, res resolution with one note in common. So you have C major. Now you have C over E. C is in common with the next target chord, which is the four chord of the C major scale, namely F major. So I'm playing F major as A, C, E. You don't need the F there because F is already here. So I don't want, don't want 
not well you could if you want you could play that but it sounds too um, big or too rich which maybe i don't want at the moment so c major c major still but with e bass and an f major so this exercise teaches you to retain the common tones between the chord which in this case is in the middle region c in the middle c in the middle c still in the middle so that's your first chunk out of a set of four chunks again and we are doing this rather swiftly so that's it's all going to be crotchets 1 2 3 4 only that last chord is a minim or a half note which lasts for two counts da do 3 4 again 1 2 3 4 so the second chunk let's navigate through that we go la ra ra what happened there still our c major which starts off the chunk the next chord would be d over f sharp which is the two major of the c major scale with a three bass so la ra and this again sounds unstable and you may be arguing why have you played a chord out of c major scale i'm going to show you la ra because it serves as a a, a tension chord or a secondary dominant chord which will then resolve to the g major la ra that's d over f sharp resolving to g major let's do that again second chunk la ra ra again i'm voicing it in this very open way same second inversion c major that's f sharp in the bass a d a in the right hand because that's all i need to highlight a d major sound isn't it i could also play that extra f sharp if you want so la ra the whole idea is now to keep that middle finger to be common there's a d which is in common between the d over f sharp chord which is the two major over the over its three da da to the five major which is g major so da 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 again it makes g feel very uh warm and resolved unless unlike a normal scenario where g is more a dominant chord which is a tension chord right so uh, so far we have da 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 next la da d over f sharp la with d in common so first chunk c is in common la re ro then la ra ra la ra but the d d d d is in common that's your bass c f sharp d over f sharp g and your melody to ru ru that's e a b okay the third line would be or the third chunk of this progression would be to go to the relative minor which is a minor so i figured we'll go from tonic to subdominant which is the 4 tonic to dominant which is the 5 and tonic to the relative minor minor chord which is the 6 minor it's a beautiful passing chord which is the the e 7th over a or e major with a g sharp bass which serves as a secondary dominant which pulls you to a minor no matter what right and it's beautiful and it's very interesting that Uh, the d over f sharp to g d is not even part of the scale of c major but it it goes pretty well similarly e over g sharp goes very well to a minor so let's do that chunk 3 la ra ra so the melody is e p c again i'm voicing it in this open way starting off as always with the second inversion of c e G C E B E B almost like a fifth chord C E C and I'm maintaining the E as a consistent common note da 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 again da 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 
try to sing the top la ra ra and maybe even sing the bottom do 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 and the common note la ra ra that's the ta ra ra might as well train your ear while you're at it so three chunks again for you do 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 then then to ru ru and now we close the door to do ta ra ra that's ga re sa e d c so la that same old second inversion of c major ta ra i'm voicing g major in this nice open way where the g is in the bottom i don't have room to play the octave so doing f b d g dominant it implies it has all the the ingredients of a g seventh so la ra ra and i'm ending with normal c major but with the first inversion e g c so ta re ra ta ra ra third la ra resolving to the six ending la ra ra one more time then na re then u te ra ru sometimes i like to do that sus and then there is a resolution to the major if you want you could do that There we go. That sounds pretty good. Now we need some movement, some rhythmic flow, and the best option we can pull for piano players is arpeggios. So uh, earlier we were just blocking the chords or just holding or plonking the chords with arpeggios. It really brings out the melody and adds rhythmic motion. So I, let me just show you. The original chord was G C E, right? with the arpeggio i'm i'm starting with the top note which is e e g and creating a pattern which could either be high middle low middle a high note middle note low note middle note or you can do even a high low middle low but i'd encourage you to start off with the high middle low middle because it's symmetric it just goes one by one ta ra ra and you may want to repeat that a because the arpeggio can kind of recycle itself so let's do that again h m l m h m l m h m l m h m that's the pattern can use your pedal for added warmth and resonance and then convert this or transform this to the entire chord progression moving on moving on and the end so it's pretty much that pattern up middle down middle let's do that again a bit slower ta ra ra ta ra ra ta Okay so that's about adding arpeggios now moving forward let's try and make this a it's already a decent enough melody i think but we can make it a bit more melodic by just thinking to ourselves do we need to start with the second inversion of c major in the first place what if we start with the root position of c major and just think ta ra ra how do i go now g is the top note la 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 you 
have different melodic options because the top note of any chord ends up becoming the melody in a listener's ear the listener will capture or catch on to or latch on to one of the three notes of your chord in this case it's the highest frequency or the highest note this is pretty much a common thing with all instruments which is why we voice chords in the first place or need to learn how to voice them so ta la la so using inversions ta ra ra things like that can be very much very much possible ta ra ra or ta ra ra if you want that ta ra that's quite cool g d higher b g e c g f e if you want to end that way could also start with the first inversion of c major which is c So I won't move too much forward you can do this on your own but just understand that each inversion starts you off that way with that shape and from there you can make things sound very melodic another technique to make things more melodic if i go back to the original inversion for our exercise which is second inversion of c you can repeat the top note in any rhythmic way you want for example This will require a little bit more finger independence as we need to practice. There we go. It makes the melody very obvious. So you're playing melody and arpeggios together. adding that rhythm and then okay so that's repeating the notes that's another way to make things a lot more melodic than it already is another thing i'd like you to consider is to float the top note now that you've kind of anchored your fingers around there don't mess with the the middle and the bottom mess with only the top maybe get a little ta ra ra in the vicinity of the top note ta ra ra te ra re almost like a finger style acoustic guitar player you know, they do that a lot ta ra ra ta re re ta ta re ta re trying my best to play what i'm singing it's my singing which is kind of pushing the piano so if you just take the top top note and just say maybe just wiggle around between the top note and the one right after i think that can be playable just give yourself a free finger in this case the pinky is free or the ring get that ta na na ta and then maybe ta na na ta na na continue the pattern pa ra i like that b flat ta na na even though it's out of scale na 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 ta ta ra ra stuff like that
the top note which is floating that would also be nice and in general when you're trying to make something melodic just look at how you want the shape of your melody to be you don't want your melody to be static like for example ta na na it's just ta na na and then one little change right so i would think la ra ra so something going higher little higher or maybe la very high and come down it's a nice uh, sort of v inverted v curve ta ra ra or ta ra ta if you want so basically you're landing on specific chord tones and you map out a shape or what i call as a melodic curve in your book in your you give yourself a blank page of paper and then you get these different shapes la ra ra that's just a line going up right la ra ra that's still a line going up but if you mess with that la ra ra that's going very high and then coming down stuff like that could build you melodic curves we'll write a few in in my handwritten notes you should check it out and to supplement this lesson a bit better you should definitely study chord inversions further if you don't feel that you're on point with the subject uh, where you can learn a lot of exercises on inversions and voicing techniques i've tried to keep the challenges of inversions very interesting not to make it very studious so to speak we also have a couple of lessons on secondary dominance which you should definitely check out to understand the theory of what exactly was going on with the chords and why they work so well right guys before i sign off it would be awesome if you could consider hitting that subscribe button and hit the like button and leave us a comment with what you thought about the lesson you can also leave behind your suggestions uh, and anything else you'd like to add and If you feel that you want something more structured, regular weekly music lessons coming into one of our classrooms and learning, you can consider doing a virtual course or an offline course in Bangalore with the Nathaniel School of Music. All you have to do is fill up a simple form. Go to our website nathanielschool.com. right and uh, if you want the notes if you want everything laid out for you in a neat pdf file head over to patreon you'll get my handwritten notes staff notation midi and a lot more not just for this lesson but uh, the stuff we've done previous and what we are going to do in the future thanks a lot for watching the video cheers catch you in the next one